guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I'm really delighted about today's guest, Anastasia Lipsky, and she's founder and CEO of AccessSpeakers.biz. And we're going to talk about a living a life of um, speaking, influencing. She's a speaker and podcast booking agents, empowering listeners to use their voice. Uh, I'm really happy to have her on the show to motivate and inspire the audience. So Anastasia, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here. It's always nice to be on a show after I've listened to a few episodes and be able to converse directly with you instead of just hearing you talking with somebody else. So it's an honor. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and it really, um, really is an honor to hear when guests hear that. Oh, it's like listening to you and you'd seeing you in person. It's great to see that. Um, so set the stage, talk about your experience and background and what you do. Well, it's... <laughs> A, a little convoluted, as life happens with a lot of people. We often end up in a space that we would never would have imagined. So my my world, I worked in tourism for 30 years. Worked for cruise lines, tour operators, hotels, all of that. And I was mostly known for working with international ground operators. And that so that was kind of my forte. But I did a lot of event planning, <clears throat> excuse me, management, like putting on lavish, lavish events around the world. And so I kind of had that experience. On under my belt and everything was moving and grooving until basically 2008. Now I happened to walk away from a very lucrative contract. I was very, you know, happy with the job that I had, but things weren't quite what I wanted and I had never been unemployed. And so I left thinking that it would not be a problem getting work. Well, that was a really bad year for anyone in tourism. And mm -hmm. I basically spent over the next two years, I sent out over a thousand resumes and I was not relocatable, which can be hard in tourism. And then God just kind of dropped this in my lap through some convoluted things tied into early social media days, <laughs> my event planning experience that got me in the door for a conference. And next thing I know, I've got someone who is asking me to book her to speak to local rotary clubs. She was a sustainable farmer and I didn't know what I was doing, but I was unemployed. <laughs> so I was like, I'll try it. I don't know. Uh, Cause she just said, you know, everybody in town, my business coach said I should be speaking about my farm to grow the farm business. So I just jumped in, turned out to be her number one marketing tool because all she did was talk about sustainable agriculture and then people would come and tour her farm and then they would end up signing up to become basically CSA or community sustained agriculture where you are subscribing to getting a weekly box of meats and vegetables from this organic farm so that was worth a lot of money for her and next thing I know she's telling everybody she knew and a business was born so I would never have dreamt up a speaker agency that focused on platform marketing speakers, basically people who speak for free to, to grow their business or speak to sell speakers, you know, that, that there's so many different terms for it. So it's not a traditional agency that books paid speaking engagements. It's people pay me to book them to speak for free because they know that it works. In particular, if you are the product, you are the service. And then that way through speaking, it's like sample advertising, which is the best form of advertising that's out there because people get a taste for who you are and what you're about. So that's that's kind of where I started. And I was everything was great. And then March of 2020 happened. And I lost everything. <laughs> yeah. So the only other free speaker agency that I knew of, she closed her doors uh, that April. And mm -hmm. um, it was brutal. But I had had clients who had asked me if I would book them on podcasts. And I always said, no, there's just no way I could. You know, it, it just didn't have the bandwidth. It was a totally different animal. And now I've got nothing. And, and keeping in mind that all of my clients, they were using speaking as a marketing tool. And now they're grounded. OK, especially in the very beginning of the pandemic when everything, everything wasn't virtual yet. Eventually, they were able to start speaking virtually which is still not the same as in-person. Uh, and, and I've noticed the attendance of in-person events still is never is not what it was beforehand. So the interesting thing was when I reached out to my clients and said, hey, let me dip my toes in podcasting. Do you want to try it? 
everyone who said yes is still podcast guesting, even though they're speaking again, both in person and virtually. So there's something to be said for the value of podcast guesting to supplement people who are speaking, whether they're professionally paid speakers or they're speak to sell speakers. Either way, it's 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 the same in the sense that you get that continual uh, exposure, the visibility, all of that is just a huge part of it. And the digital footprint is much more vast in the podcasting space than it is the speaking. So I feel every speaker would benefit from doing podcast guesting. Not all podcast guests want to do speaking. They are two different animals and, and you can, you can use them separately. You can do it separately, but the two combined is like that, you know, one plus one equals three, right? It's that same, same type of synergistic uh, build, if you, if you will, when people are doing both. So that's, that's kind of my, my short version of how God just walked me down this crazy wild path and dropped me here because I would never have thought of doing this. Yeah, so, uh, you know, a lot to unpack there. Uh, one th- question I had was this idea of, um, and I love this idea of kind of like podcast guessing as a clip or reel for like the actual speaking engagement. Um, you have this term as um, why podcast guessing isn't giving you the returns you expected. What's going on there? There are a lot of people that are jumping on the podcasting wagon, okay, Uh, either creating their own shows and or deciding I'm going to be a guest. And they just start booking themselves, Mamby Pamby, all over the place. And then, you know, six months down the line, they're like, yeah, didn't really work for me. What I find more often than not is they really don't have a strategy in place. This is not something as simple as you just show up on a show and magic is going to happen. I think the biggest mistake that people make is not having clarity around who they want to get in front of. And therefore, they're getting on the wrong shows. And if you're on the wrong shows, you're misaligned right from the get go. Now, you might you might still be of value to those listeners. But if you if it doesn't somehow tie into what your your ultimate goal is, in particular, if a person is doing this as part of their business strategy, it's important that the two be fully aligned. So knowing who you want to get in front of and why you want to get in front of and what value you can bring to them is going to be the most important thing. It's you want to be careful of saying yes to just every opportunity that comes your way. And it's easy to do it, especially when you got friends. They're like, hey, <laughs> come on my show. And, and it's not that there's anything wrong with it, but we have to recognize that our time is our most precious resource. And we want to be ruthless in how we invest our time. What is the ROI, the return on investment for me if I'm going to take time to be on a particular show? So the number one thing is misaligned shows. Mm -hmm. And then I feel the number two thing is not, not doing the things with each interview in order to get the most bang for your buck. Far too often it's you know this, you're a host, okay, host ghosting, people who they just show up, they use your platform, it's like a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, you never hear from them again, they're not promoting it, they're not interacting with you, they're missing opportunities, and I honestly don't feel it's because they're bad people, and and they don't care, I really believe it's ignorance, I really believe that people don't understand how important the relationship marketing aspect is within the podcast space. So there are so many things. And when I do my consulting, I I go into deep, 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 deep suggestions on all these different things that people can do to get the most out of every interview and every relationship with that host. I want you, Dr. Christopher, I want you to fall in love with me as a guest. So I'm going to do those things to try to make it easy for you. Get your content on time. Do an Apple review before I'm even on your show. You know, I you can bet your sweet bippy I'm going to be sharing this. Now, LinkedIn, by the way, is the only social sandbox that I play in. But I will be sharing this on LinkedIn. In fact, wait, I'm interrupting myself here. But 
I want to change my view to gallery, you and I side by side. Can I take a quick uh, screenshot of the two of you, two of you, you and me? Yeah. Is that okay? Mind if I take a screenshot? Okay, hold on one second. I knew there was a reason I need to keep my keyboard in front of me. Okay, let me do it. You got It's a bit slow, so you got to smile for a moment. Wait, wait. Did that grab it? I don't know if that grabbed it. Hold on one second. My, my screen print has changed. Okay. Hopefully that helped. And there we go. Okay. So the reason why I do that is because I'm actually going to share about our interview today, even before it's aired. So I do recommend, I'm kind of demonstrating for all your listeners right now, if y'all want to be an amazing guest and you want to get as much exposure as possible for both you and the host, when you're doing your interview, do a screen print and then share that socially that day. And I'll be putting it on LinkedIn and I will be sure to tag you. Uh, one other little tip for a lot of people that they do not know about that I see happening over and over and over again is that people will use a third party app to pre-schedule a post on LinkedIn and you can't tag people if you do that. The only way to tag a person on a LinkedIn post if you pre-schedule it is if you pre-schedule it through LinkedIn. So make sure that you do all your pre-schedules through LinkedIn itself or go back to it the day that it has actually aired and then edit it to add the tag. Because if I don't tag you, you're not going to know that I shared it. Therefore, you're not going to know to like and comment and engage with me. And if you're not going to engage in something that I share and if I'm not going to like if you don't tag me, I'm not going to know that you shared it. I won't engage. If we're not going to engage with each other, then what's the point? Why are we even putting it on LinkedIn to begin with, right? So it's about doing things right. I would rather people do le fewer podcasts, but really eke out every bit of exposure and develop the relationship with that host so that you get a deeper, deeper uh, you know, value within each and every one of those episodes that you do. Yeah, you touched on that too. Questions was one was um, finding groups and podcasts to get in front of and kind of this this uh, fit and also getting the most visibility. I want to talk about this idea of um, this. Uh, you talk about this idea of how to how does should one avoid to not be blacklisted by event planners and or podcast <laughs> producers. Um, I'm <laughs> I'm curious to yes. hear your thoughts. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, so. Event planners talk to event planners. <laughs> podcast hosts talk to podcast hosts. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to be the person that that you're you're these hosts are sitting around Podfest having a cup and they're like, oh my gosh, my nightmare client beats your nightmare client, <laughs> right? You want to be the person that they're saying, I had the best guest ever. Okay. So be thinking about what you do that's going to make people love or hate you, right? So with when it comes to speaking, some of the biggest mistakes, well, I'm going to say for both, get the content to the event planner and the host in a timely manner. If you are communicating with them and they ask you for anything, don't make them ask you twice. When you are speaking, if it's an in-person live event, I always recommend that people get there early. They make sure that they find that event planner. They connect with them. They say, what can I do to be of support? Is there anything else that you'd like from me? I always recommend that they go and they meet with the AV people ahead of time, talk to them, say, hey, is there anything I can do to make your job easier? Do not be that diva speaker that comes in and says, you know, I want my lukewarm <laughs> water with lemon and honey in in an eight ounce glass, like, like, you know, just this crazy stuff or asking them to print their materials for them or just being difficult. It happens, but believe me, I mean, I, we laugh about it, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, these are things that, that happen, okay? This is not <laughs> something I'm making up. And so just, you wanna be that type of person that they really connect with 
and that is helpful and is not demanding. Getting there ahead of time is always helpful because then you can get to meet people ahead of time. Um, now I'm kind of going into a little bit about just some techniques when you are speaking, uh, whether it be virtually or like virtually, if you go in earlier and you could hear the members talking about different things, if you're in it in person and you could hear people talking about different things when you're doing your presentation, if you have the opportunity to say something and, and, and mention someone's name, it's like, oh, yeah, when I was talking to Joe about his, his golf game yesterday and he was talking about blah, blah, blah. When you do that, that perks up everybody's ears because they know that you, A, cared enough to remember his name, B, cared enough to remember that situation and that you're you're involving him in that conversation. It absolutely changes the power that you have in that moment and it makes it so much more personalized. So that now back to being the diva. So don't be difficult. Podcast hosts, same thing. With When it comes to the speaking world, the expectations of sharing things is not quite as important unless it's like a summit or some, one of those types of things. You know, if you're speaking at a conference, they generally are not expecting you to do that type of uh, promotion. But in the podcasting world, you need to be promoting absolutely every episode that you're on. And you need to take the time to know something about the show. Listen to the show. Make sure that you understand how this person flows. I've listened to at least two episodes with you so far because I want to be familiar with your voice and how you how you just navigate conversations. So, yeah, number one, I say get it, get them what they need, get it to them on time and and connect with them. Somehow be connected with them before you even do the event and certainly afterwards. Yeah, that's wonderful advice. And, you know, you know, as we know, we all have the um, the story just of the, you know, the the guests from guests from hell and uh, or just yeah. you talking about ghosting, you know, they have like hundreds of thousands of followers they show up on show and then you, then it's like you do everything to support them and they just like <laughs> um, it doesn't feel good does it i mean a host can feel used and abused i mean the truth is you and anybody else out there who is a host or is considering being a host it's a lot of work it's time it's energy it's money you you're investing resources and you're doing that if it's an interview show you're creating a platform for the rest of us to get our message out there. Yeah. How dare we not reciprocate somehow, some way to show our appreciation for this opportunity? Because this is a blessing. You know, this is not like you should be bowing and pontificating before me because I, the great Anasasha, are on your show. No. You know, this is about me coming in and giving value to your listeners, to you, and me learning from you as well in the process. And I want to support you as much as I can because I, for one, would never have my own show <laughs> because it's too much work. I don't want to do all that work. So I recognize it and I honor you and I thank you for all that you do. How can people find out more about you and follow you on social media and so on? Well, as I said, LinkedIn is the only place I'm going to hang out socially. <laughs> so if anyone wants to connect with me there, by all means, please do. Ideally, uh, introduce yourself when you submit a you know a request to connect, because otherwise I might not know if you're the real deal or if you're that chic that keeps trying to get connect with me. So, <laughs> but it, I do have a place, and I I also want to suggest to anyone who is using podcast guesting and. You, you can do the same thing in speaking as well, is you just have one place where you send people. Now, I'm I'm like in an infinity mirror right now because I'm I'm making suggestions for your your listeners right now and what they can do. And the whole point is that if you do what I'm gonna suggest, you don't have to speak as much as I am at this very moment. So <laughs> long and short of it, if I was not speaking about podcast guesting and speaking, I would have just answered your question and said, well guess what? I have one place that people can go. And that is accessspeakers.biz yeah. slash thank you. This is a landing page that I've created that is evergreen because I can change it anytime I want. 
all my content is there. My offer, if you will, is basically that I'm always happy to do a mini free consultation with people so they can get a sense for what I do in my consulting services. So just reach out through that location. It's just my company name, accessspeakers.biz slash thank you. And the reason why it's important to have one place is that when you keep in mind the fact that anybody who's listening to us right now, you might, hey to you who's walking, hey to you who's got your dog with you, hey to you who is doing laundry, folding laundry, or you're commuting right now, or who knows what you're doing, right? We tend to take in podcasts while we're doing something else. So you don't want to say, oh, well, you can find me here, and you can find me there, and here's my my you know my my handle on Twitter is Sunny Bunny five two three, and like all these different things, and you've completely lost them. So everyone else who follows this, you you don't have to go into a five minute you know dissertation like what I'm doing right now, but I'm hoping that this is helping to uh, kind of convey the value of having one simple location for a person to go where all your content's going to be and whatever your offer might be if you do have one. Yeah, I love that. And uh, what a fa- fantastic conversation and um, just relationship management. And be sure to follow all of Anastasia's resources, which will be in the links and show notes. Give her a like and follow on socials and check out her thank you page, free ebook. And with that, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. I so appreciate you. And I appreciate everyone who is listening to us until the very end and I'm also going to say please do a, a solid for you Dr. Christopher because them going into your show in particular Apple reviews Apple doesn't care about them but people do so please give him a a like give him you know follow him on socials of course but go in for that Apple review give him five stars Take a few moments just to say something great about the show, because that's how more people are going to discover this show and be attracted to it and give it a listen for the first time. And then I'm sure they'll stay as regular subscribers after that.